I'm sure you've felt it, those strong gusts of wind when you're walking through the city, especially in the downtown core. But what's happening here on the ground doesn't have so much to do with Mother Nature as it does with skyscrapers. I'm Haitan Abu Shosha. I'm an assistant professor at Rice University, and I'm studying wind engineering for more than 10 years. There's so many wind tunnels in Toronto, but that's not what they're uh, called. Okay, so that's a misconception. The right technology of what, of what you said is the downward, the vortex, uh, again, like the corner vortex or uh, the funneling. Let's yeah. say wind is this way, it will hit the upper part of the building and then get diverted downward. Once a building stops wind in its path, the wind slides down the facade, hitting the ground and causing a vortex. Normally, channeling effect when, when you have two buildings, okay, beside each other facing the wind, and what happened is the gap between the wind, like the, the two buildings, the wind speeds up in there. Then there's the corner vortex, when wind accelerates around a sharp corner, and Toronto has a lot of square towers. Skyscrapers have been going up for the last hundred years. Conditions got so bad in the 80s that climbing ropes were installed along Front Street to prevent people from being blown away. Thankfully, in the last 20 years, we've come up with better solutions. So this is uh, the wind tunnel at, uh, uh, sub, it's called the subsonic wind tunnel at Ryerson University. And here we can actually test buildings or, or bridges at different scales. Sensors are used to see how wind interacts with buildings at different heights. Engineers then use that information to make changes to a building's design. Adding a podium to the bottom of a building, for instance, stops those gusts of wind that are caused by a downwash. There is a wind that is going downward, parallel to the face of the building. If you, if you have something that's sticking out, it will be diverted. Another solution, hedges. When these leaves grow, okay, it will block the wind. Behind that wall or hedge, to reduce it in a way that's going to be like a gentle breeze. With more cities going vertical, there needs to be better planning for how building up affects life on the street. A full pedestrian wind analysis takes about a week or two. Problem is, when another building goes up, that could change the reading. It's coming, it's coming this way. Uh, again, it's back and forth, but... Uh... So developers and cities need to be willing to make adjustments, and quick. In a city like Toronto, there are nearly 400 new buildings proposed.